the public needs to know that we, uh, to meet this net zero 2050 uh, carbon free economy, nuclear energy is a safe and secure alternative to producing power by oil, coal, and, and natural gas to reduce fossil fuel consumption. Hello and welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn de Guzman from Investing News Network. To give us his perspective on the uranium market is Rick Mazur, President and CEO of Forum Energy Metals, a Canadian uranium exploration company. Welcome, Rick. Oh, thanks for inviting me for this interview. Yes, uh, we're happy to have you. So before we get into the topic of our discussion, um, could you give us a little bit of a background about uh, Forum Energy Metals? Yeah, uh, Marilyn, I started Forum in 2004 as a uranium exploration company in the Athabasca Basin. And uh, we also uh, um, recently got back into exploring in the Thelon Basin in, in Nunavut. The, um, uh, the Athabasca Basin uh, project portfolio consists of nine uh, exploration properties, all drill ready. And uh, we recently uh, staked some ground in uh, the Thelon Basin of Nunavut, uh, right next door to Arano's 133 million pound uh, Kigavik deposit, on ground formerly held by uh, Chemical Corporation, uh, where their exploration activities in the, in the last uranium cycle discovered two very, very important uh, uranium deposits on Trent. Right. So we can't talk about uranium without talking about nuclear energy, which is currently experiencing a re-emergence. Countries are now revisiting their nuclear energy strategies and even investing in new nuclear capabilities. Even Japan and Germany, which have earlier announced uh, plans to gradually shutter its nuclear power plants, seem to have since backtracked on that strategy. What is driving this movement? Well, I, I think uh, there's three, three, three things that are driving this movement. Number one is the desire to meet a net uh, zero uh, carbon-free 2050. Uh, that's, uh, that, that economy, to achieve that economy, uh, is going to need nuclear energy as part of the mix, absolutely, because nuclear energy is a baseload source of, of energy that uh, provides power for 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, the second important thing driving uh, this change, I believe, is the electrification of the world in everything from transportation to manufacturing. Um, and uh, there was a report by SNC-Lavalin in 2021 called Engineering Net Zero. And in that report, um, in Canada alone, we need to triple the power production in this country, let alone the rest of the world. So in that, also in that report, uh, they, they examined all the al alternative uh, sources of energy. And for instance, um, uh, that we could build, to meet those demands, we could build 200 wind farms that cover 46 million acres of, of this country. Or we could build uh, 19 nuclear reactors that only cover, have a footprint of say 75,000 acres, a much smaller footprint. But of course, practically, we need to look at all sources of, of uh, energy, uranium, uh, nuclear power, uh, hydro, and the renewables, wind and solar. Yeah, so uh, those are all the interesting uh, activities that are happening in that uh, in sort of that sector. Is this um, all these trends? Are these giving explorers and mining companies such as yourself, you know, enough confidence in the economic viability of restarting production or exploring new uranium, uranium sources? You know, absolutely. Um, uh, actually, one of the uh, latest developments in nuclear technology is small modular reactors. Uh, technology, which uh, um, have even a smaller footprint than the typical conventional 1,000 megawatt uh, plant. Uh, these small modular reactors are, 
are um, uh, gaining a, a lot of acceptance worldwide. And uh, they produce up to 300 megawatts of, of energy. And uh, Ontario has just uh, uh, commissioned uh, a small modular reactor build in that province. Uh, and that'll be coming on uh, in four years. Uh, so th that's also a big, uh, a big demand for, uh, for nuclear energy and, and uranium. So looking at the uranium market, um, you know, post Fukushima, um, utilities were getting their uranium from uh, above ground inventories that were sitting there. Well, those inventories have dried up. They've dried up. A and uh, you see now uh, Cameco is, is putting back into production its uh, prolific MacArthur River uh, deposit. That, uh, um, uh, it, it, that, that shows you that uh, we need to, to uh, get producing uranium out of the ground like right now. And the reason for that is that current supply and demand fundamentals, uh, there's a 70 million pound uh, annual shortfall for uranium production compared to the annual consumption right now. And the World Nuclear Association uh, predicts that on top of that, we need 100 million pounds more of, of uranium annually produced uh, by 2040, uh, through to 2040 uh, to meet the, the, the perceived uh, demand in, in nuclear power. So um, uh, new depo uh, deposits are starting up again, like MacArthur. Uh, pro projects that are already permitted will, will, will start to uh, uh, go into production. And then we need new, uh, new uranium discoveries to meet this uh, future demand. So yeah, I'm bullish. Right. And I guess, so all these demands that are uh, coming up, um, and you mentioned Fukushima, like in the middle of all these nuclear energy, there's still this, it still incites safety concerns among the public, right? Fearing another, you know, another Fukushima nuclear incident. So there's that public ed education component. Would public perception be consequential on the growth of nuclear energy and, by extension, the uranium market in your opinion? Uh, in your opinion, and do mining companies have a role in, in uh, you know, to play in that public education? Yeah, well, absolutely. That's that's why I'm doing this interview. Uh, I I, uh, uh, I I think the public should be aware uh, of. Uh, I mean that that's that's in in the mainstream, right? But uh, nuclear energy has been around for over 50 years. It's a very safe and highly engineered uh, 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 endeavor. Um, you know, the, the public needs to know that we, uh, to meet this net zero uh, 2050 uh, carbon free economy, uh, nuclear energy is a safe and, and secure alternative to producing power by oil, coal, and, and natural gas uh, to reduce fossil fuel uh, consumption or uh, production. Um, so, you know, nuclear power, I think, is, is gaining more mainstream sort of uh, acceptance. Uh, the European Union, for instance, in its taxonomy on sustainable energy development has included nuclear power uh, as, as a sustainable uh, venture uh, to, to create power. To, to meet these uh, these demands, and um, I think env environmentalists, uh, uh, people around the world, understand uh, uh, that nuclear energy is a is is a safe uh, uh, way to produce uh, clean air and and a carbon free future. Um, you know, an, a, a, another thing uh, that I'd like to talk about on the on the public uh, education side is the need for the public's understanding of, of security of supply. Uh, recent events with Russia uh, invading the Ukraine have certainly brought that to the forefront. Uh, not only is Europe uh, um, experiencing an energy crisis due to the restriction of natural gas for their energy needs, but people do not realize that one third of the highly enriched uranium that goes uh, into a nuclear power plant comes from Russia, and, and so one third of uranium being used by Western world nuclear power plants uh, is sourced from Russia. And, and I think uh, 
given the geopolitical events, uh, we need to start looking at a domestic source of uranium and, and, and processing. So um, that, that's, that's an important uh, public education initiative. A, a third publication initiative I, I'd like to talk about as well is, is uh, we need baseload power 24-7. Uh, nuclear is, is really the only uh, carbon-free uh, technology that, that, that can provide that. And uh, I think, um, new, you know, renewable resources are, are, are in the mix. Wind and solar should be there, but it doesn't provide power 100% uh, of the time. And, and the world economy uh, needs constant power to, to, to manufacture things and heat our, uh, light our homes, etc. I, I think Bill Gates in his book, uh, How to Avoid a Climate Crisis, uh, said it best about nuclear energy. And if I can just read verbatim what he said about nuclear energy. It, it's the only carbon-free energy source that can reliably deliver power day and night through every season, almost anywhere on Earth, that has proven to work on a large scale. I think he said it all. Right. That, that's uh, that's interesting. Certainly, the uh, public education part of it really is all encompassing, right? So it's not just you know because of the, not just about the, the safety um, profile of it, but also that as you mentioned, you know, supply, uh, domestic supply, security, energy security. Um, talking about sustainability, so that that one end of that spectrum is um, you know nuclear power, nuclear energy as a sustainable source of energy. But on the other side of that spectrum is the production side of things, right? So um, when it comes to responsible mining, not all uranium mines, our production processes are created equal. What makes a truly sustainable uranium production? Yeah, um, I, I guess I can only uh, speak from my personal experience um, uh, here in Canada. Um, I mean, I started looking for uranium uh, in the 70s as a young geologist and, and, and uh, been a, quite an advocate of nuclear power. But um, uh, it, it is a sustainable process that's been going on Mining in the Athabasca Basin has been going on for over 50 years. The, the uh, producers uh, in the Athabasca Basin, the Cameco, Orano, Denison, they all have uh, ESG uh, policies that I think uh, are, are the envy of, of a lot of mining companies uh, in, in the world. Um, so do, do I think uh, it's sustainable uh, on the regulatory basis? Uh, the Canadian Nuclear Safety Association. Uh, not only do they have rigorous uh, uh, regulations for the generation of nuclear power, but they also regulate uranium mining and processing. So um, their, their, their regulations are some of the strictest in the world. Uh, and that's one of the things we should be proud of as Canadians, is, is, is the safe uh, production of, of, of uranium and, and nuclear energy in this country. So to answer your, your question, um, do I think it's sustainable? Yes, uh, it, it is. And, and, in a, and it's an endeavor that we must start right now uh, in increasing in, 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 in the future to meet our climate challenges. Great. And on that note, that would conclude our discussion today. Uh, thank you, Rick, for joining us and sharing your insights on the outlooks on uranium. We're certainly um, going to be continuing to watch how this unfolds in the market. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Thank you for watching, uh, and we will see you next time for another interesting discussion on CEO Insights.